When you start working with software development, you quickly realize that software design matters. It is so much easier to work with well-designed software such as an API or toolkit than it is to work with poorly designed software. You also quickly realize that software design is hard. It is not easy to come up with a design that serves all of your needs well while still being easy to work with. A while ago, I asked you on YouTube if you were interested in videos about software design and related topics, and you overwhelmingly answered yes. So, this is my first video about software design, but I'm sure I will be making more in the future. When people talk about software design, they typically refer to either the software design process itself or the result of that process. The goal of the process is to figure out what functionality the software should have, as well as figuring out how to structure the implementation of that functionality. More concretely, you can break software design up into four parts. First, a functional design process. Second, a functional specification, which is the result of the functional design process. Third, a structural design process. And fourth, a structural design, which is the result of the structural design process. I used to believe that the software design process is one unified process, that the functional design process leads to a functional uh, specification, and that this functional specification is then fed into the structural design process in order to come up with the structural design. However, having worked with software development and thus design for 25 plus years since 1998, I have realized that a lot of the structural design decisions are not made based on the functional specification, but are based on non-functional design goals that the organization developing the software has. Of course, the functional specification does affect the structural design because after all, the structural design has to implement the specified functionality. But exactly how that functionality is implemented is typically decided based on other factors. There are many ways to implement the same functionality and exactly which of these ways, which of these designs is best for the given situation typically cannot be answered by the functional specification or the functional domain. Similarly, we often use similar structural designs in different applications with quite different functionality. If the structural design was decided solely based on the functional specification, this would probably not be possible, but yet it is. Ideally, the functional specification is purely abstract as I have denoted here, meaning it does not say anything about how the functionality should be implemented. Um, how we implement the functionality does not get specified until the structural design, which is then concrete as I have denoted here. In practice, however, a small part of the functional design will probably leak into the structural design, particularly around interfaces to the software, such as user interfaces or APIs, the functional specification might specify how these interfaces have to be implemented, or at least how they have to look at the surface level. By the way, I have not come across any clear distinction between software architecture and software design. Personally, I make the distinction as follows. Software architecture, I consider to be about the structures between the different processes in the system. By processes, I mean system processes such as applications or services. So in the, in the diagram here, it is the structures here between the blue processes. Software design, I consider to be about the structure inside a single process, meaning how that single process implementation is structured internally. And in this diagram here, it is these yellow structures here. Thus, when I talk about software design in this and future videos, I will typically mean the internal design of a single application or service. There are usually multiple ways to implement the same functionality as I have already hinted at earlier in this video. 
more than one possible design in other words. In my opinion, there are no right or wrong designs. You will have to choose which design option that suits your software best. When you choose one design over another, you're making a design choice. All design choices are trade-offs. The trade-off you're making is a trade-off between the pros and cons of the different design options. Furthermore, design trade-offs can be temporal, meaning sometimes you have to make a trade-off between achieving a benefit now versus achieving a benefit later on. For instance, sometimes you may have to choose between development speed now versus development speed later in the future. You might choose to have a lower quality now to gain a higher development speed now, with the consequence that development speed might drop later on in the process because of this lower quality. The alternative would be to keep quality high now with a reduced development speed now, but with an expected higher development speed later on because quality is still high at that point. Looking at this chart, it looks like prioritizing software quality early on is the better choice, and in many cases I would agree, but this may not always be the case. In some situations, getting a quick and dirty solution out fast is more valuable than getting a higher quality solution out later on. This is often the case when making an MVP, a minimum viable product, or sometimes when fixing critical errors to an important system. The lower quality can in these cases, in these situations, be fixed later on. So. Just exactly how do we do software design in practice then? How do the functional and the structural design processes look? And how do the functional specification and the structural designs look? There are several different approaches to software design and some of the more popular ones are listed here. Going into detail with each of these philosophies would be too long for this one video, so I won't do that, but I will probably go into detail with some of these philosophies in later videos. Conscious design is my own software design philosophy which I am currently working on synthesizing and clarifying. The core idea is to increase our consciousness of why we make the design decisions that we make. This means increasing our understanding of software design goals, design techniques, the pros and cons, and the context in which we apply them. I will also get into more detail about conscious design in later videos. Just a small warning here towards the end of this video. Be careful with design advice that is formulated as doctrines. Typically doctrines follow the forms similar to these two statements. You should always do ABC or you should never do XYZ. In practice, you might sometimes actually have to not do ABC, even if the doctrine says you always should, or you may actually need to do XYZ, even if the doctrine says you never should. Reality tends not to be so binary. If you just follow these design doctrines blindly, you may not always end up with the best result. This is one of my main points in conscious design, by the way, so I will get back to that in future videos too. Finally, let me just try to sum up the main points of what I have been talking about so far. First of all, functional and structural design are two different design processes. While the functional specification might affect the structural design somewhat, most of the structural design decisions are made based on non-functional goals. Second, there is a difference of granularity between software architecture and software design, and personally I set the delimiter at the process level, so everything that has more than one process is architecture, and everything that has one process or less is software design. Third, there are no right or wrong designs. All design decisions are trade-offs. Fourth, the key to becoming a good software designer is to learn why we make the design choices we make, which means increasing our consciousness of what trade-offs we are making, which again means being more conscious about the pros and cons of each design option and whether they apply in the given situation, in the given context, in other words. 
That's it for this introduction to software design. I will be returning to this topic again in the future with more details, so be sure to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in this topic. Also, check out the description below this video for a link to my software design playlist as well as other relevant links. And if you like this video, I would appreciate if you hit the like button.